morning I've come to one of the glaciers up here on the south end of Iceland. I have no idea how to pronounce this. I'm gonna take my worst attempt. So Haima Joku, something like that. I'm just gonna give a broad disclaimer right now that uh, I have no idea how to speak Icelandic at all. So I'm gonna mispronounce probably every location I go to. Sorry about that. According to the information plaque that's up at the viewpoint, this is uh, apparently the fourth largest glacial outrun. Uh, and it's an outlet glacier, so there's, and it's retreating too, unfortunately. But it's left the glacial lagoon in front of it, which is leaving these bergs that are floating out there that are just absolutely fascinating to look at. They're streaked with all kinds of volcanic ash and deposits, and you get these white and you know, almost bluish white with black uh, zebra stripes. It's absolutely fascinating. But shooting across the lagoon, there is this set of black cliffs with this amazing greens on it. It's something that's pretty iconic to Iceland. Uh, just seeing these black rocks with all these mossy greens on them, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's an overcast day today, and that's set in over the top of these cliffs, and it's creating this kind of really atmospheric haze. It's, it's a lot of white, so I'm trying not to blow out the sky because there is a little bit of detail in there, um, but it, it's, it's just kind of it's conditions I got. But it works with the scene, I think. And there is a canyon up here that's got a river coming through it and it's dumping out into this lagoon. Uh, and that's what I'm shooting. It's at with a couple of the more larger and prominent bergs floating in the glacier lagoon in the foreground. There was a little bit more mood and atmosphere kind of in the canyon itself when I was scouting this earlier. And then of course I had to run back to the van and get the view camera. Uh, but now that I'm here, uh, it's, I, I still think it's well worth shooting. So I went ahead and shot two exposures. I'm shooting Fuji Provia 100F on this one. And I've taken two exposures that were F37 1 over 5. The dark rock appears to be a lot darker than the, you know, the bright sky and then the, the greens in the foreground, but it's actually more of a gray tone. Uh, so it fit within the dynamic range of Provia pretty well, I think, at about four stops dynamic range. So I had to be really careful triggering the shutter because, of course, I forgot my cable release. So I to make sure I don't induce camera shake when I'm triggering exposure. Kind of a bummer, but yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Now I gotta go explore this glacier and see if I can find some kind of composition on that. It's kind of funny, the, the main viewpoint is the glacier, but the first composition I saw was something totally else. <laughs> now I'll go, uh, I'm gonna go play with some icebergs and see if I can line something up and maybe even this glacier. Provia did pretty great here. And aside from just a slight cyan cast, which is pretty characteristic of Provia, I was pretty happy with this. So I walked down a little closer and I set up my view camera, just staring right down the mouth of this glacier. I'm not entirely sure about the composition. I set it up with my 240 millimeter lens. Uh, just filled the frame with ice. I guess we'll see what, see what it looks like when it gets back. Uh, it's just a lot of chaos. There's a lot of really cool shapes and stuff, but they were just a little hard to compose. So uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I took two exposures with a, with a faster shutter speed, it was one over four. Uh, F45. And then because we got some ripples in the water here, uh, I thought maybe I'd try a shot where I smoothed that out a little bit. So I put the six stop Lee little stopper on it. Uh, and I set my shutter speed to 15 seconds, F45. 
and made my first fatal mistake with the 6x12 back. I forgot to put the dark slide back in uh, and I pulled the film back off when I went to break the camera down and exposed that frame to daylight. So it's toast. But that, boys and girls, is why we shoot doubles. I have enough other frames that I took that uh, I'm okay with it. And that was the last one on the roll. So I don't have any other Pro-V on me right now. So I didn't reshoot it, but I think uh, I think I got it anyway. So flew the drone up over the glacier. Uh, and that, that was absolutely epic. Uh, I'm really stoked about that. <laughs> yeah, we're getting just a little bit of sunlight. Just kind of filtering through the clouds a little bit there. It just looked absolutely fantastic on the, on the controller, so. Anyway, now I'm just hiking along the edge of this lagoon and I'm gonna look and see if I can find some stuff to shoot on digital. And then it's probably about time to head back towards the van and find some lunch. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. The first two exposures turned out pretty much as expected. The composition's pretty abstract, but that's definitely what it was going for. The third exposure was a surprise here. This is the exposure I used my Lee Little Stopper 6-stop ND filter on. As you can see, there's quite a color cast. I might normally be pretty annoyed by this kind of performance from a filter that costs as much as it does, but in this case, I kind of like the blues. It's a little strong though, and unfortunately, I didn't like this smooth look quite as much on this particular image, so I went with one of the previous frames that has more ripples and detail in the foreground. I'm at the Black Sand Beach. It's on the southern end of Iceland here. It's really well known for this prominent set of sea stacks. That's kind of the composition a lot of people shoot. And then there's these really impressive basalt columns that are just right when you get on the beach. And of course, it's midday, so there's, there's a lot of people out on the beach, which is to be expected. Uh, and I have no problems with that. So there's this little cave that everyone stops in to take the selfie in and you know do their thirsty photo thing in there and I don't blame them because it's absolutely it's, it's incredible it's, it's an awesome fascinating set of basalt columns but we were getting some light rays coming out of the clouds as I was walking by couldn't resist the urge to just grab the camera set it on a tripod and just walk around shooting tight compositions of just basalt you know shapes and patterns Adam Gibbs called them wallpaper shots where you just fill the frame with a you know a pattern but they're just super fascinating. So I was going back and forth between the 16 and 35 that's on there now, and I got a 24 to 70 that I was shooting a little tighter with. And I was just framing up anything interesting, just these cool looking swirl patterns and tried a composition where I put the sky in with it too. And you know, and the light was coming in and out and highlighting certain parts and ridges. Yeah, it's good stuff. And it was just a case of trying to shuffle in and out of people and you know, not getting someone else's shot to, you know, share the location a little bit and shoot up over the top of everyone's head so no one's in your shot anyway, you know. It's all good stuff. It's really happy with what I captured there, so. Yeah. This coastline is just incredible. All this stuff behind me. It's all just super jagged, awesome looking textures. Just absolutely incredible. No other way to describe it. It's been a good day. So the Star Wars fan and me, of course, had to come shoot the Yoda cave. 
It has a real name, which I can't pronounce. I'll put that on screen. Ah, but it's lovingly known as the Yoda Cave, and you'll see why. These prominent shapes up on the very top that look like Yoda's ears, of course. What I think is interesting is there's, it's a relatively small cave that you sit inside. You're inside of it looking out. And there's a little bit of water dripping down from the cave ceiling. Uh, what's hilarious to me is there's a dry patch on the floor of the cave that matches, that mirrors the, the head shape. It's super funny. It's probably about 30 minutes from sunset, maybe a little more, and I'm here shooting with the 5D Mark IV. There's really only kind of one composition here. I'm sure if you were really creative, you could probably come up with more. Uh, but I mean, there's the main attraction everyone comes to shoot, of course, is the cave opening. So that's what I'm doing. I've set up with my 16 to 35. I have to shoot pretty wide on this because in order to fit it in frame, you know, um, you need a pretty wide angle lens. I'm shooting vertical. Because I'm close to sunset right now, I got some clouds that are starting to turn color a little bit. So that's what I'm shooting, kind of hoping that that's gonna, you know, amplify as the sun continues to go down. There is a thin band of light, very, very low on the horizon. So on the drive in, I could see on the very west, there were some light rays coming down on the landscape over there. So my hope is that the sun will be able to light these as it continues to go down. And if it does, I'm gonna shoot some beautiful clouds. Without a sky interest, I think this, this shot would be kind of, you know, uh, I've seen it shot with stars. Um, I've seen a shot with Aurora. I think Mads Peter Riverson shot it like that. But yeah, pretty straightforward shot. See right here, right now, I am set up at one eighth of a second uh, F8, and I am bracketing my shots pretty severely, like two stops, because it's super, super dark in the cave, and I don't want it completely black. I want a little bit of detail, at least on the edges where the light's bleeding in. And then the sky, of course, is so much brighter, so you have to really, really expose, you know, a handful of stops faster in order to catch through that without blowing it out. And yeah, fortunate to have this place to myself. I don't know if it'll stay that way, uh, but it's a cool location. It was close to me and the sun was going down and I had to pick a spot, so this is just as good as any. So we'll see how things progress as the, as the light continues to change. Yeah. So as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, sure help me out if you hit that thumbs up button down below. That really helps channels like mine out. Maybe while you're down there, consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me, more from Iceland. We got a few of them coming up. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you in the next video.